Hello, you're watching Up New X, and this is my ranting video on a recently started airing and right now still on air Yoku haha <laughs> drama. Hold on. Gen Z. It's a contemporary drama led by Zhao Lu Si Wu Gang, Luo Yi Zhou, and it has 40 episodes. I've watched the first 18 episodes. Admittedly, with quite a bit fast forwarding through the drama. Wow. <laughs> That's all I can say about this drama. It's written by Liu Liu, who is a very well known scriptwriter. She had a couple of really successful drama and story written, such as Wu Ju, one of the best known ones she's done, but then in recent years she kind of completely flopped because of what she said on social media, particularly during the Chris Wu thing that happened two years ago, basically saying the woman exposing Chris Wu is friends with benefits and then it's actually rather despicable of her doing that because by doing that, she kind of killed all the future Wu Yi fans, fans, girl fans' possibility of ever sleeping with him. So ever since then, she kind of completely flopped in China. <laughs> well, clearly it wouldn't stop you from writing scripts. This year we've got um, <laughs> this drama. The backwardness of the things that happens in this drama is frankly shocking and it's an embarrassment to China as a modern country. <laughs> you know, the only thing of this drama that belongs to this century and looks like it belongs to the 2020s is its height definition. If you only watch it at 1080p, it's still super high definition. It almost looks like a 4K. And that's the only thing to me of this drama that's up to date to its actual time. Everything else is like at least 100 years old. I'm gonna rant about this thing. It's not gonna be structured. I'm just gonna start talking. You have our female lead character. Supposedly she still got the free quotation mark education in China, which is nine years. And then whether she's gone to high school, not quite sure, not that important. And then she's from an orphanage and she very early on started working, earning her own keeping, which is cool. But then the way she acts and talks just looks like somebody who has no idea about how to function in the contemporary world. And it does not make sense that if you actually grow up in an orphanage and you don't have parents to take care of you, that you would act like that towards every stranger you encounter. Usually people who don't have that kind of family care would be more assured cleverer and much more observant of what's going on in the world so they can take care of themselves. This is a polar opposite character in this drama. Everything she does is trying to kill herself and annoying other people. At the beginning of this drama, she works as a uh, fast food kind of delivery, basically skip the dish delivery person, a Chinese version. And then she lies to her customers when she is not there yet. She would say, I'm already there or I will be there soon. She <laughs> runs across red lights, throw food on her customer and let the soup and food land on their head. And then she comes across some kind of domestic violence happening when she's delivering food and she goes directly hit the guy and then break their bones and then she ends up in police station. Like that's the first episode. And then somebody came in and paid the money to let her out. And that guy is played by Wu Gang. Wu Gang, you are a pretty good actor, but recently you have done so many bad dramas in a row. I am really worried about Joy of Life, the second season. This is like one of the worst middle-aged guy I've seen in a drama land as a character. The reason that he would want to pay that much money and not really his own money, it's like his family's money, which is actually his wife's family's money. Uh, let's talk about that later. It's because he believes she, by her blood, yes, by birth, would be the heir of the other Chinese medicine long lineage family whose previous generation is kind of his teacher level. So basically this young girl who is much younger than him is actually higher in generation level than he is. And that whole family's descendants kind of have died out and he's been searching for their blood heir. And supposedly that family has this acupuncture technique that is a loss to humanity if it doesn't get inherited. But the thing is she grows up in an orphanage. She doesn't know she comes from that family. She's never been trained in Chinese medicine. She barely actually graduated from high school. And somehow he just believes because she is by blood the descendant of that family. Therefore she has to inherit it and she has the ability to do it and she needs to be pulled out of the trouble. And he will take the responsibility of teach her Chinese medicine, regardless of whether she wants to do it or she cares about it and she is good at it or not. Is this like a somebody is gonna have their third eye open? You know, they can x-ray humans just by looking at them like certain Korean dramas would do it. Is this a fantasy drama? It just happened in contemporary time. Apparently by episode 18, it's not. It's still a normal human drama. It's just by blood. Everybody believes that can happen. And then he pulls this girl into his practice and then tells everybody or the students and other doctors working in his own sort of medicine practice. She's the heir to that legendary family. By her generation level, she is 
higher than all of us. Bow to this higher level, generation level girl. Just because she's by blood, that you have that going on. And so this drama is filled with this type of Feng Jian Yu Nie stuff going on. I can give you many examples. That's just one. Chinese New Year and Luo Yizhou's role, who is Wu Gang's role's biological son, to his grandfather and grandma. Pay them respect during Chinese New Year and kneel down, which sometimes happens, that's okay. But then what he would be saying at the same time to the grandpa is, Grandpa lived 10,000 years, which is an imperial China's thing that you can only say to the emperor. So wish the emperor 10,000 years longevity. Basically, apart from emperor himself, everybody else, like crown prince, empress, empress dowager in the whole imperial family, you can only use a thousand years. So this 2020s university graduate says to his grandfather and grandmother, I wish you live 10,000 years. I wish you lived 1,000 years. Not only is he copying the imperial China's, mm -hmm, he's also distinguishing the fact that by gender, the grandfather is the emperor of the family and by gender, the grandma is the... Uh, <laughs> so she can only get 1,000 years instead of 10,000 years. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> How did it pass censorship? There's a conversation that happens between Wu Gang and Jiang Shan's row. So the male lead's parents' row. And the lady of the family is like, I don't really think you should take in the girl. And he's like, she's the heir, right, to that whole family. It would be pity that that whole family's technique gets lost, which is like the whole family died out. So their technique is already lost anyway. <laughs> like, how can you make it, you know, come back? <laughs> Just wake up her blood. And then he says, even if she doesn't become a really good practitioner of Chinese medicine, by bringing her in under my wing, teach her all the right ways of doing things, I would at least have trained a good girl, a good future wife for the society. <laughs> 2020s and your goal is to at least produce a good wife for some man you don't know where that man is well that man is actually your son you know you, you'll see that's gonna happen and also in this whole drama you'll see this pair of husband and wife Jiang Shan and Wu Gang plays wow unbelievable that she exists in 2020s the guys everything comes from her she is the richer more well-established person in society. Her family comes from the long lineage of Chinese medicine, but her parents treat her as if she's not their real kid, but her husband is. They lean so much more on the guy who is actually their son-in-law, and then they put down the woman of the family and make her the slave of the family so much. And she internalized that so much, and she would even, in her language, treat him as her master, like she is in a slave position. In the drama, so many plots happen like that. And this guy, Wu Gang Place, is so by default, the owner of the whole household and family where all the resources he gets, even money-wise, actually comes from the wife's family. And he just so rightfully and happily and feeling so deservedly gets all of that and thinks it's all good. Other types of shocking plot in this drama includes the group of Chinese medicine students in this drama uh, saw a girl suddenly sort of fall in a supermarket and she's having a cram and they just took her pouch and then made the diagnosis on small that saying basically she has period cramps and then did a little bit of acupuncture and made her feel better and then later she actually had a really bad ectopic pregnancy because of the misdiagnosis of these kids students she actually had to have a surgery and have one of her fallopian tube removed. <laughs> but the way male lead reported that to his father is like really happily, you know, with laughing, smiling faces. She's good. Now she, she, she doesn't have any like life-threatening situation. She only had this and only had that removed. And then Zhao Lu's role would come in and ask the question because she's not trained in medicine. So, I mean, I understand. Like She's like, how many fallopian tubes do human have? Obviously the answer is two. And then she's like, well, then she still got one left. Yeah, you have two eyeballs. How about like dig one out? You know, just like give it for free to other people because you know, you can still function. Everything happens in this drama in the most ridiculous fashion imaginable. She lives in a dormitory with a lawyer lady. We're going to talk about the lawyer lady later. And the lawyer lady bought this <laughs> mm -hmm. 
to practice her acupuncture, but obviously it looks ridiculous. And she just thinks it's a cool toy or cool thing, so she 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 grabs it without getting any permission. And there's no any form of regret or apology that Zhao Lu's role has towards the fact that she takes her roommate's stuff without getting permission. So the lawyer complains about this against Zhao Lu's role to Wu Gang, the teacher of the whole class. And Wu Gang is like, why can't you be more generous? It's only something that works is like what 70 RMB or something. If you let it go, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. And Jolu says like it's all good. Imagine put yourself in the lawyer's position and uh, your stuff gets used without permission by a roommate and somehow you are at fault. That's just another plot in this drama. I mean what else can we see? Oh this lawyer lady, well wow, she's interesting. And why does she go to Chinese medicine class to learn Chinese medicine? And completely kind of like put her practice at a halt. Whether she's gonna go back to practice law or completely not we I don't know, but she basically gave up herself being a lawyer. How many years do you have to go to school and then practice to be a proper lawyer who can actually go into a court case, right? So it happens because when she finished the case and she walks out of the court and the opponent lawyer was like shaking hand with her and saying, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. And then they walked down the big steps of the court and that guy suddenly had a heart attack and died. Yeah, I sorry, I'm laughing when somebody died. And Billy's common couldn't resurrect him and that guy just dies. And she saw it and she got so shocked and just suddenly find law is just meaningless to practice and she can't do anything to help that person and she wants to be now a doctor to save lives. So she gave up law on the spot and started to go for medicine. And the first thing she picked is going to a privately run Chinese medicine class. <sighs> Makes a lot of sense. Other weird plot includes uh, there's a girl who's paralyzed from waist down and she's in a wheelchair. Wu Gang's row cheated or lied to the girl saying we have some old passed down from generations, thousands of years, secret recipe to actually help you. But he confesses to Zhao Lu's row is like, if I tell her she can be saved, she will probably lose all hope to live and then her mother would also. So I decide to lie to them so that we can wait for the possibility of next year or tomorrow, human medicine suddenly advance to the point where we can solve that problem. That's a big moral debatable thing for a doctor to do is not telling your patients the truth. That type of thing also happens in the drama. Uh, what are the other shocking things? Oh, and the male lead and the female lead, they were drinking on like by a riverbank. It's not wild, it's paved, it's like a park, there's water. And he intentionally made her drunk just lost consciousness and then he walked away left her at night alone on a bench on the park next to a body of water genius how many things you're doing wrong with that everybody in this drama is like in some way despicable unbelievably bad i'm not surprised that jolus picked a role to play like this you know in the drama like she's done a lot in the row but like Wu Gang, really is he in debt the only thing i can think of is he's in serious debt and he needs money and so he doesn't care what role he takes on maybe not in money but like in some kind of renting he owes somebody something that he has to play a role. I, I don't know. And Yoku. <laughs> the way that Yoku has released just like really ridiculous stuff it, the continuously. <laughs> it is really acting as if it's dashing towards a wall. It knows it's heading towards that but it cannot stop so it kind of goes crazy and it's like well might as well just like full speed. Press on the gas and let's just die in the most spectacular fashion. It's almost like a desperate attempt to say, since we cannot make good stuff, let's make really crappy and really debatable things. Any publicity is good publicity. Bad one is also a good one. It's better than not having one. So they went for a crazy script. And in terms of all the Chinese medicine thing that this drama contains, just ignore them, okay? <laughs> ignore them. I mean, the drama also has that warning at the end of every episode. It's like, don't believe what we say is real. Don't practice. I don't know. Like. If they are actually writing this whole story, trying to promote Chinese medicine, or actually trying to uh, make the reputation of Chinese medicine even worse. And then, I don't understand. A drama like this, how can it go on satellite television? There are so many dramas that got taken down for reasons that are so much less than this, and honestly less shocking and less problematic than this. But this drama, past censorship. It just shows you in reality the society is still run by real people and um, people are all fallible and there's always a way to get around things when you have people not 
hard rules ruling anything. Anyway, it's funny. I am completely unstructured and I'm not really like making sense in my speech and language today. I'm just too shocked <laughs> by this drama and everything that happens in this drama. Just when you think Chinese drama can't sink any lower, it will give you something <laughs> that shows you, oh, oh, you have thought wrong. We can go even Obviously, I wouldn't recommend you watch this drama. I think every second you spend watching this drama is some kind of harm you've done to your own lifetime because you only have that many seconds to live on this planet. But if you're curious, just trying to see how ridiculous it can get. I mean, test it out. Pick any episode. Don't have to go from the beginning. Just pick any random episodes and if it has a subtitle option, just see what happens and see how shocking it can be. Thank you for watching Avenue X. Hope you're having a good day, good night, good evening, whenever you're watching this. Hope you will never come across any doctors in your real life as the doctors you see in Gen Z. Please take care. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.